Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we come to worship God here this morning. And welcome to everyone at home who uh, have come to join us too. Well, it's uh, holiday season, so uh, as you see, <laughs> this, the theme for our service is where is God when it's stormy, because uh, that is your average uh, British weather for summer, is <laughs> where is God in the storms? Hopefully there won't be too many storms, either uh, physically with rain uh, and lightning or with emotional problems for you in the coming weeks. Uh, just got a couple of notices. One is to say, um, having a meeting of the weekday welcomers. So if you, uh, you're one of the weekday welcomers, I'm going to have a short meeting after the service. If you'd like to become one of our weekday welcomers and come and sit in the, in the cafe and uh, welcome people uh, or, or point people in the right direction if they've got uh, something that they need to do. If you want to find out what that involves, then do come and join us at our little meeting. And those who are doing it already will uh, calm your thoughts and uh, explain what's going on. I can hear the bell. It'll go off. It'll go off. I've got ringing in my ears. Oh, it's the church bell. Uh, and the other notice is uh, to say that this coming Tuesday is a very important and special day because it's Toby's birthday. Toby is going to be nine on Tuesday. Uh, we had, we've had several birthdays, haven't we? We've had Sylvia's and uh, Jane's and all sorts. So we sang happy birthday to a whole load of people last week. Um, anybody else got a birthday this coming week? No? So you're pretty unique then. So let's say, oh, 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 don't we have? Joy? Well then, Joy, what day is your birthday? Wednesday. So you're a day older than Joy. And uh, Michelle, you've got a birthday as well. What day is your birthday? It's next Saturday. Oh, that's before we meet again. So we've got Toby, we've got Joy, we've got Michelle. Any others? No? Okay then, we'll sing happy birthday. <gasps> happy Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Toby, Joy and Michelle, happy birthday to you. Ah, even some harmonies there. <laughs> Harmonies basically just sing any notes that I'm not singing. <laughs> Let's publish the bands of marriage. Got a couple of uh, couples getting married. Um, we we publish the bands of marriage between William Andrew Havelock and Gemma Louise Taylor. They are both single and of this parish, and they're actually getting married here in September. And between Peter Hans Baker and Julie Dawn Purnell. They are both of this parish too. If anyone knows any reason in law why these people may not be joined together in holy matrimony, then you are to declare it now. Still good. Right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Speak your word now in the tumult of our world, in the confusion of life, and especially in the hearts of those present today who find themselves all at sea, tossed about by the storms of sorrow, suffering, anxiety, and despair. Bring order out of the chaos, confidence out of fear, faith out of doubt, and peace out of unrest. A certain knowledge that nothing Nothing, not even death itself, can finally overcome us. In your name we pray. Amen. If you are able, would you like to stand as we sing our first song, which is uh, The Lord's My Shepherd.
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you And I will trust in you For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will lead me Guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup is overflows with joy. I feast on His pure and I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me. sit down. So when I was thinking about uh, our service for today, I thought, what picture shall we put up for you this week? And I looked at various different ones, and in the end I came up with that one. That's a choppy scene, isn't it? I wouldn't want to be out on the, on the waters while it's like that. And it wasn't until uh, I'd put the PowerPoint together and I was going through it, and I noticed right at the very just above that sort of pointy wave on the left, just to the right, there's a lighthouse there. There is a lighthouse. I don't know if that's a famous painting or not. Um, I didn't look. But there's a little lighthouse there. And a lighthouse, it, it kind of does help and it doesn't help. Because if you were sinking, then you would still sink uh, if, you got a, if there was a lighthouse. But if you weren't sure of where you were going, then it would give you direction. So, I look. I, that wasn't my first choice. The first one I came across was this one. 
Has any, is, is, is that a famous painting? Painting? I, I think it is a famous painting. I, I, I knew it. Uh, and I saw that and I thought, oh, that's a stormy scene. That's a stormy scene. Uh, the name of the painting, actually, A Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. Ah, Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. Uh, above the cloud there, uh, there's calm and there's sunshine. Um, um, have you ever have you ever been on holiday abroad on a plane, and you've left I don't know Stansted or Heathrow, and it's been pouring with rain, and it's been pretty miserable. Uh, when the children were younger, we tended to go abroad during the autumn, half term, October time. Or oh, it could be rough in this country, uh, and yet you'd get in the plane, and within minutes. You'd be above the cloud, the sky would be blue, and it felt like so much better. It felt like holiday already, and you were just a few minutes into the, sli the flight. And above the clouds, there's sunshine, blue skies, and it's completely different. Painted in 1818, this painting by German artist Caspar David Friedrich, uh, the subject stands on a mountain top, uh, not in hiking boots with a rucksack over his uh, over his shoulder. He's not a mountain climber. He's a wanderer. No Kendall mint cake in his back pocket, but in a frock coat, just a walking stick to help uh, help him to get up the mountain. And he's reached the top, and he's got nowhere else to go. And he's looking around with a swirling mist, a wanderer above the sea of fog. A chaotic scene, and yet I think a calm scene as well, the swirling mists. Somehow re relaxing the more you look at it. The painting's been widely interpreted as an emblem of self-reflection or contemplation on life's path. Very profound. Uh, and he, this, this guy, Caspar Friedrich, uh, is well known for painting the backs of people, people from behind. I reckon he just wasn't any good at doing faces. I, I, I reckon that's what he, and that's how he got, that's how he got away with it. Uh, but uh, um, there he is, and we we see the scene that he sees, uh, but we we know that he's with us in that chaos, in that swirling fog. Uh, we're not on our own. There's the subject there. Uh, online, there are all sorts of modern versions, different versions of this, so very, uh, quite amusing one. Uh, but I think if Caspar David Friedrich was to have painted it today, I think uh, it would probably be more like this. The man would not simply be standing out there looking at the mist. I reckon he'd be taking a selfie, don't you? And we just have to be careful, because he's not taking in what's in front of him. He's looking at himself, and he's missing what's going on. And as we go through the storms of life, as we go through the chaos that comes our way, we just need to recognize who is also there with us, and not simply concentrate on ourselves, but hand things over to God. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you now in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weaknesses and our unbelief. So let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through jesus christ our lord 
Amen. Now our collect prayer, our theme prayer for this week. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Could we have the uh, first of our readings, please? B. First reading is taken from Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 28. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan, but they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this system here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and to take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and throw, threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty, there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood, his brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for twenty shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, 
he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was ready a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Open your living word to us this morning, Lord. Help us to see your comforting presence overcoming the storms we face. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Amen. Good morning. Last month, we were invited to a garden party by the bishops. It was a lovely occasion. Richard and Jane were there. It was a good catch-up with friends and fellow ministers from across the diocese. Before we left, we popped to the loo. There was a bit of a queue, so we were redirected to a loo in the outbuildings. Sarah went first. As she came out, she said, Don't lock the door. The lock seems a bit dodgy. I'll stand guard for you. So in I go, and force of habit, I lock the door. As I come to leave, I turn the lock and it spins freely in my hands and does not unlock. Sarah tries to open the door from outside. She alerts some friends. They've got a coin. They try with that. No joy. There's a small window up high. I'm thinking, well, if necessary, I can probably climb out of the window. Now, if I was going to get stuck in anybody's bathroom, then I really wouldn't want it to be the bishops. In the end, Bishop Martin comes along, he gets some tools, and he manages to get me out. All is well. Sarah couldn't stop laughing. Of course, I should have listened to her, shouldn't I? But the bishop came to me in my moment of distress, and he saved me. Thank you, Bishop Martin. All readers are due to be relicensed in September. If I'm not here in the autumn, you'll know why. But I am here with you today. And I was reminded to Michael that it's good that we have a series of Old Testament readings in our lectionary this quarter. I love to look for storylines of Jesus in the Old Testament. And Joseph's story is one such case. Joseph is called by God to rule for the benefit of his people. His brothers don't much like this, so they decide to do away with him. They sell him as a slave. Twenty pieces of silver was the going rate for a slave in 1900 BC. Later, Jesus is betrayed by one of his closest friends for 30 pieces of silver, the going rate for a slave in AD 30. That's right, God had built in inflation. <laughs> yeah. And later, sorry, Joseph is sent to Egypt as a slave. And shortly after his birth, of course, Jesus is taken to Egypt as a refugee by his parents for his safety. Joseph is tempted by Potiphar's wife, yet he resists. Although he's falsely accused and arrested, he suffers for crimes he did not commit. Jesus is tempted 
yet does not sin. He's arrested, false accusations are made at his trial, and he suffers on the cross for the sins of the world. As Joseph suffers in prison, he's joined by two other prisoners. Through the interpretation of a dream, Joseph speaks words of life to one of those two. As Jesus suffers on the cross, he spoke words of life to one of the two who were crucified with him. Joseph is released from prison and becomes second in command in a different kingdom and in doing so he's able to save his people from famine. Jesus was raised up from death and he's now seated at the right hand of God in the kingdom of heaven and he will save us if we turn to him, come to him, recognize our need of him. And next week our reading will reach the end of the story where Joseph reveals himself to his brothers and forgives them for the wrong they did to him. Upon the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. In a sense, a prayer for us all, a prayer the Father is pleased to grant. God's hand was on Joseph, even with him in the darkest of times, in the prison and the injustice of it all, and likewise for Jesus. And as Michael said, our theme today is, where is God when it's stormy? God doesn't always send a bishop when we're in a bit of a fix. The disciples were in a boat, on the lake, in a storm. They'd been rowing all night, buffeted by the winds. They were terrified. This had happened once before in Matthew chapter 8, but that time Jesus was with them in the boat. This time Jesus comes walking to them, on the storm, on the water. Not as a scary ghost, but rather a comforting presence. Take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. The storm continues, but Jesus is walking on the storm. He is master over the storm. And he's there with them in the storm. My family, like so many of you, have faced some storms this year. I've already talked about my uh, granddaughter Elsie who was rushed back into hospital when just 10 days old. There was one night when she nearly didn't make it. We prayed. You prayed. Lots of people prayed. And a week later she was back home. The consultant saw her recently for a six-month check and he was happy with her progress. And I've already talked about my mum's death in April, just two weeks after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. God's presence was definitely with us in the hospital room and mum was given the grace to face her death, trusting in her saviour and his promise that a place is prepared for her in the father's house. And it's a blessing that she only suffered for those final two weeks of her life. Simon Thomas, ex-Blue Peter and Sky Sports presenter, was interviewed by J. John on one of his Facing the Canon uh, interviews. Simon lost his wife to blood cancer, aged just 40, leaving behind an eight-year-old son without a mum. Such pain. Yet Simon talked of the incredible peace which filled the crematorium at her committal service after a friend prayed. God's peace which passes all understanding. Such a witness to everybody who was there. And since Simon has spoken of the joy and the pain mixed together, for himself and his son. There have been new blessings. He's got a second wife, yet the pain of the loss lives alongside. All of J. John's Facing the Canon interviews can be found on YouTube. We've been watching some in our house group. They're great. What is your experience of God in the storms of your life when you have called out to him? He's faithful. He's promised never to leave us. Jesus' last words to his disciples, surely I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He's faithful and he comes miraculously to us. Time, space, water, walls or any adversity are no barrier to him. But there's more than simply his coming to us. What does Peter do? Peter sees Jesus walking on the water 
and seeks to do likewise. Would you? Me? I'd be one of the other eleven, staying firmly in the boat. I'd be thinking, just a minute, Peter, we're in a storm here. We need every hand on deck to get through. And it's great that Jesus is here with us. Yes, Jesus is miraculously walking on the water, but is now really the best time to ask to do likewise? Shouldn't we wait till the storm is past, till we're safe, back ashore, then perhaps do some walking on the water practice in the safety of a sunny, calm afternoon, in the, in the shallow water, with Jesus on hand to teach us. You try walking on the water if you want, Peter, but I'm staying here in the boat. Yet, it's often in the midst of adversity that God miraculously intervenes. In the deep, stormy sea, Peter had no option but to trust in Jesus. We don't need a miracle in the shallow waters, when everything's going well, we need it when our life is under threat. So maybe Peter was right. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, Pete, Jesus doesn't stop to think about his answer. He doesn't do a risk assessment, preach a pet talk first, does he? His instant response is, come. For he is in control, and he loves to share with us the resources of God. He loves to equip us, fill us with his spirit, that we might master the storms we face and play our part in his service. Jesus says in John chapter 14, you will do even greater things than I because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So just like Jesus, Peter too walks on the water, on the storm of life, for at least a moment or two. And as he started to sink, Peter may have been of little faith, but he was of greater faith than those who stayed in the boat, surely. Peter had his own story to tell after this. The others only had someone else's story. You may have noticed I love to share stories <laughs> in my sermons. Stories of how some God has touched someone's life. Because stories are powerful and we tend to remember them, don't we? But I am challenged here. Many of the stories I refer to are not my own. They are from others. Others who have more readily got out of the boat whilst I've stayed firmly inside. Now I do know the truth. I am fully with the other eleven who worship Jesus in the boat. Truly you are the Son of God. Absolutely. Yes, Lord. So as we pray for revival, for a move of God's Spirit in this town, Perhaps we need to be a bit more open to follow the prompting of Jesus in his call to come, to get out of the boat, knowing that he's with us. In the midst of adversity, maybe we should step out like Peter, praying for courage to overcome the storms of life, rather than remaining fearful in, in those storms. Maybe we can step out and pray for a prophetic word to bring hope to someone in despair. Pray for healing and wholeness where there's sickness. Maybe if we step out in faith, we can bring the saving presence of Jesus alongside someone else who's going through a storm. But there are two lessons we can learn from Jesus as we seek to do it. Excuse me. First, back to verse 23. After ministering to the crowds, Jesus went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. He actively seeks a time of solitude and quiet and refreshment with his Heavenly Father. He needs this to sustain his ministry. It's this time of quiet that equips him to walk on the water. Let us prioritize our times of quiet. Let us listen to God's quiet prompting, his call to come. And secondly, let's keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. He will guide us. Peter's fine walking on the water while his eyes are fixed on Jesus. Once he takes his eyes off Jesus and looks at the wind and the waves, then he's overcome by fear and cries out. Now we will step out in faith, and we will sometimes get things wrong if we do. We'll make mistakes. We'll take our eyes off him. 
and we'll feel like we're sinking in the storms of life. But he is bigger than our adversity, than our mistakes. Whenever we cry, Lord, save me, he's always there. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? This is what Jesus is pleased to do. Our part is to trust. His part is to save. Jesus says, come. Let's come to him. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you with our prayers today in this holiday season. Whether we are travelling or staying at home, help us to enjoy the world around us and wherever we are to see you, the creator, in the beauty of your creation. If we look, there is so much to marvel at, from sunflowers to sunset, and worms to waterfalls. The storms at sea with the crashing waves can help us to see your power and the gentle trickling streams can remind us of your peace. Let us spend time and take it all in and realise your greatness through the everyday as well as the special sights we see. Thank you that we are close to the coast and can enjoy the seaside with a choice of wonderful locations within easy reach. And also that we are surrounded by beautiful villages and countryside with so much green, especially after all the recent rain. And if we have had or get the chance to go away and see completely different landscapes, May we still remember to thank you for our creation. Help us not to take it for granted, but to take care of it. And as we take time to enjoy your creation, may we also invest in some spiritual refreshments. Give us the occasions to be calm and still and enjoy being in your presence. Give us the right books to read, documentaries to watch, and friends to be with, so that when we experience the storms of life, we can take comfort and strength from what we have read, seen, and heard. Amongst the beauty of your creation, Lord, for so many people life is tough, and it's even harder to admit it. So many are facing financial difficulty with rising mortgage payments, increasing food costs, higher utility bills and more demands from all directions. Help us to be aware of our friends and neighbours in these situations so that we can quietly support and encourage them. Help us to be generous with our donations to the food bank so that others in the town won't go hungry. Don't let us waste food but value all that we do have and be creative to make it go further. As well as financial difficulty there are those with relationship problems so we remember those who are not happy and trapped in situations where they can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, and those people who would rather seek revenge than forgiveness. We pray for those going through divorce proceedings where things are not amicable, for friends that no longer want to be our friends. Only your love can overcome our feelings, so pour out your spirits and help us to pray for them. Thank you that the cafe is a haven for some going through some of the storms of life and that they are finding encouragement and friendship there. 
Thank you for the compassion of the Ozia staff and that we have members of the congregation who are willing to spend time with these people. Give them a listening ear and the right words to say at the right time or to know when just to be with them so your love and care may be shared with them and that they feel calmer. Help more of us to volunteer and to step out in faith so that we can share your love and be an encouragement in this way on more days when the cafe is open. God of love, please embrace all those whose hearts today are overflowing with grief and answered prayers and a huge sense of loss. Give them space to express their tears. Comfort them and hold them close to you through the coming days and prompt us to be caring friends in the weeks, months and years ahead. We particularly ask you to be with Chris, who now has to adjust to life without Erica. And while we remember Chris, we want to thank you for Erica's life and witness. And the way she wanted to tell others about you and minister to us in your name. We think of those known to us who are ill at this time, whether in hospital or hospice or at home and those waiting to go into hospital for tests or surgery. Especially we ask you to be with Deborah and Heather. We ask for your power to work in all areas of their lives. Give them comfort and peace so that they know you are close to them and in control. May those working in the NHS and independent healthcare services have strength and compassion to keep going. May they bring comfort and hope to those they are looking after and may, they, may we respect their calling and be kind and patient with them as the waiting list seems to get longer and longer and longer. Let the dispute with the junior doctors be sorted so they feel valued and encouraged. And we also remember Katie from our congregation, training to be a doctor. Help her Christian faith to guide her and show your compassion to those she meets. So Lord, we come before you with mixed emotions, but to give thanks that you are always with us, supporting us and always ready to hear our prayers. You are the one who gives us life and can bring your Holy Spirit power and calm into our lives, even in the middle of a storm. Please help us to be responsive and to trust and to step out in faith and see what happens when we offer ourselves to you to work through us in whatever situation we find ourselves. Let us say together, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever. Amen. Thank you, Judy and Tony. Thank you for your words, too. Let's stand as we sing our offertory hymn, uh, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, forgive our foolish ways. <laughs>
God of life, saviour of the poor, receive with this money, this bread and this wine, gratitude for your goodness, penitence for our pride and dedication to your service in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit down? The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross, he died to save us from our sins, he rose in glory from the dead. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels and celebrate as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highs. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed with Christ's body and his blood. Pour your spirit on us, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and for ever. Amen. And as we prepare ourselves to receive this, our communion today, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in our closing prayer of thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, would you please stand as we sing, uh, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Would you please sit down as we join together in our closing prayer so we pray Lord Jesus Christ you have humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father Amen and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. There will be the opportunity for prayer in the memorial chapel. If you need to pray with someone in confidence, there are refreshments are being prepared at the back of church as I speak. And uh, if the uh, weekday welcomers or those of you who would like to join in with our weekday welcomers, we'll have a little meeting at uh, one of the tables at the back once we got ourselves a cup of coffee. But if you must go, then go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week.